Hello all the full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a first ever discovery of a magnetosphere around a distant planet somewhere out there in another star system. Or essentially, an official confirmation that magnetospheres do exist around exoplanets, even though we still don't really truly understand how magnetospheres are formed around the planets we have here in the solar system. But at the same time, there were also a few surprising discoveries in regards to the type of the planet this is, and the actual magnetosphere that it produces. And so let's discuss this in more detail, and specifically focus on what exactly this means for the future of astronomy, and what this means for our understanding of various exoplanets out there. But to start, which planet are we actually talking about, and where is it located? Well, it's not really that close to us. It's a planet that you see simulated right here in a system that's sometimes referred to as Kepler 3b, but its official first name is Hat P11b. And our planet, planet Earth, is located somewhere right there at a distance of approximately 123 light years away from here. But let's start with the name. Why is it called Hat P? Well, it's actually the name of a Hungarian project, H here stands for Hungarian has been running for nearly two decades now and has actually discovered quite a lot of different planets by using various mounted cameras in different locations around the planet that essentially just look at the brightness of the stars and try to find different planets passing in front of those stars. The name itself stands for Hungarian Automated Telescope Network. But it's now a big network and a lot of different universities, including American universities, participate in this looking for various exoplanets. And to date it's been really successful, it's actually discovered quite a lot of various exoplanets out there. But back in 2009 it discovered this unusual hot Neptune-like planet located at 123 light years away from planet Earth. A planet that was orbiting relatively close to its parent star, suggesting of course that the temperatures here were probably pretty high, the current estimate stands at approximately 800 Kelvin, or basically higher than the temperature on Venus. But it also seemed to have a relatively eccentric orbit, so it wasn't really that circular, and at the same time it was somewhat inclined at approximately 110 degrees compared to the rotation of the star itself. All of which was somewhat unusual and somewhat difficult to explain. But more intriguingly, around the same time, back in 2009, some of the French astronomers observed unusual radio emissions coming from this planet, and this was actually something that created a lot of buzz back in the days. Now we're not talking about these types of radio emissions, we're talking about natural ones. The ones normally produced by various natural phenomena. For example, it could be produced by, I guess, extremely powerful magnetosphere, but at the same time it was just way too powerful to be that. The scientists afterwards, after a few years of investigations, suggested that it was probably an exceptionally powerful thunderstorm of some sorts, with possibly something like 3.8 million lightning flashes in a square kilometer every single hour. And that means that something very powerful was going on on the surface of this planet or in the atmosphere of this planet. Now that's a lot of lightning strikes, that's ridiculous amounts of lightning strikes. And obviously is something that we still could not explain even today. But there was no other way to explain these unusual radio observations coming from this planet, especially because it's actually really far away, so we shouldn't really be detecting anything. Back in the days, the scientists also compared this to some of the storms on, for example, the surface of Saturn, and it seems that the most powerful thunderstorms we've ever seen from Saturn were less than 1% as powerful as the ones detected from this planet. But now, it looks like the scientists have discovered something else absolutely incredible about this planet by observing it in a very specific way. For this study, the scientists used the iconic Hubble telescope, and specifically they used one of the instruments that's able to observe things in the ultraviolet light. With the telescope revealing what seems to be some sort of a charged carbon particles, forming a shape that resembles something like this around this planet. And these carbon ions were probably interacting with the magnetic field around the planet, producing all of the ultraviolet radiation that was then detected by the telescope. More importantly, it didn't just detect the ions around the planet, it also detected clear signs of what we usually refer to as the magnetotail, the long formation that usually stretches from the planet away from the parent star. With the particles then moving away from the planet at a speed of about 40 to 50 kilometers per second. And interestingly, the tail here is pretty long, it's roughly around one astronomical unit away from the planet. And that makes it almost as long in terms of distance as the one around Jupiter. 
with preliminary calculations suggesting that the magnetosphere of this relatively small planet is around the same in strength as the one around Jupiter as well. The values are suggested to be anywhere from 1 to 5 Gauss, whereas the one around Jupiter is about 4.1 Gauss. But the more important part of the study is the actual technique the scientists developed in order to first of all check all of this, but also the technique that now allows us to look for magnetospheres around other planets. In order to confirm their observations, they obviously used a computer model to see if they could reproduce this observation by using mathematics. And according to their paper, the initial modeling does suggest that this is basically the best explanation we have right now for what's observed by Hubble and what we're seeing coming from this planet. And obviously it also makes quite a lot of sense as well. However, there are some intriguing differences between what we have in the solar system and also on planet Earth and what they're observing around this planet in the system of Kepler-3. And so first of all, obviously because of the temperatures and the proximity to the star here, which is roughly around 1 20th of the distance of Earth to the Sun, this actually causes a lot of the upper atmosphere here to basically boil off into space. And right now the scientists believe that this is exactly what's causing such a large magneto tail to form behind the planet. And at the same time, when it comes to the structure and the composition of this planet, it seems to have very very low metallicity. In other words, predominantly this seems to be a hydrogen slash helium planet, very similar to Jupiter and Saturn, but very different from Neptune and Uranus, which are normally high in metallicity. In other words, it's essentially a kind of a mini Jupiter, but the mass of this planet is only about 8% the mass of Jupiter. And the interesting part of this discovery is that if we look at our own solar system, planets like Jupiter and Saturn, which are low in metallicity, have a relatively strong magnetic field. Whereas planets like Neptune and Uranus have a much higher metallicity, they have a lot more non-hydrogen and non-helium elements, but at the same time they have much lower magnetic field compared to Saturn and Jupiter. And this planet seems to have really small size, very low metallicity, and strong magnetic field, just like planets like Jupiter. Way stronger than expected, actually. Which also, according to the authors, sort of challenges our ideas about how we think some planets form, specifically planets like Jupiter that normally just contain hydrogen and helium on the inside. But despite our inability to explain how this planet was formed, the discovery of a magnetosphere here is obviously really good news. It of course suggests that many exoplanets we're going to be discovering in the future, by probably using a very similar technique to what the scientists use here, are also hopefully going to have some sort of a magnetosphere protecting their atmospheres and possibly protecting their oceans if those exist. In other words, we now have a very interesting technique that's going to help us look for these magnetospheres around some potential terrestrial planets. But whether this applies to all of the planets is not something we can answer just yet. Since the detection of this magnetosphere relied on the detection of ionized carbon, any future planet we're looking at has to have some carbon coming from somewhere, most likely somewhere from the atmosphere itself. And so chances are this technique can only be used around planets that might contain some carbon compounds, for example methane. If a planet has methane and the methane is being broken apart, turned into ionized carbon, and then some of this carbon interacts and creates ultraviolet radiation, we might be able to see this from a distance. But otherwise, this might not really be a really good technique for all situations. Nevertheless, I'm sure future studies will discover something incredible using something similar, and so it's definitely something extremely interesting that we'll talk about in some of the future videos. Until then, check out the study in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about science, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.